Have you seen them? Yes. Over there. Come quickly. Run. Hurry, hurry, they'll be gone. Thank you very much. I Thank you, Mr. Randall. Don't let the tide catch you. Your breakfast ready. Sarah? Sarah?
Good morning, Mrs. Weber. Oh, good morning, Mr. Marinello. What a lovely morning it is. Isn't it beautiful? You came by water? Yes, yes. Mr. Randall was kind enough to bring me over. Oh, my nice. What beautiful roses. Yes, aren't they beautiful? Oh. And don't they smell sweet? Oh. Mrs. Weber, I, I would like to ask you a favor. May I fish from your cove? Oh, any time. <laughs> you, your fish are the finest of all the islands. Oh, but they're not our fish, Mr. Marinoff. Well, perhaps you would do me the honor of sharing my catch with me. Oh, how generous of you. Yes, indeed. You come at a good time. Yes, the fish should be biting now. The tide will just be on the turn. And the herring will be running. Yes. I must be on my way. Yes, good luck. Thank you. <laughs> oh, dear. You must be thirsty. I'll give you a nice drink of water. You'll feel better. This just comes from. Hello, Mother. Oh, dear. Hello, Philip. Just think it's 46 years. Doesn't seem like it. Talking to yourself. Uh, yes. Anybody answer? <laughs> Not yet. But your teeth cold. And your cereal, too, dear. Yes, it was. But you shouldn't do without your breakfast, Libby. This is my blue dress, isn't it? Oh, I see. Well, you not fix it. There. There. And you did without your shoes. And I couldn't find them. Perhaps they're under your bed. I'll get them for you. Probably. But you really should eat something, Libby. Blue has always been a favorite color of mine. Well, I'll be right back. You didn't answer me. Answer what, dear? I asked you if this were my blue dress. <laughs> yes, it is, dear. I don't forget things you know. Oh, yes, I know. What are you doing? I'm dusting. Busy, busy, busy. Always busy. I wish we were in my house in Philadelphia. Oh, but it's so hot in Philadelphia now. I like the heat. It keeps you from being so busy. Well, dear, <laughs> this is Maine, and this is my house. And somebody has to keep it tidy. What are you doing now? My animals for the fair. You're late, Sarah. Aren't you usually finished by August? <laughs> there seems so much this year. What would the town's annual fair do without Sarah Weber? It's a worthy cause, dear. The world is full of worthy causes. Yes, indeed. This is a little koala bear. They live up in the trees. And they won't come down if there are a lot of people around. Very sensible. Oh, you'll never guess what I found. What, Sarah? The old stereopticon. 
You remember? And Libby, I found the cards too. All the old family pictures. Oh, I wish you could see them. That's you and me and Tisha down in the cove. And here we are back in Philadelphia. Uh, one of our tennis parties. And mother and father all dressed up. <laughs> I'm going to donate this to the silent auction table. They say they're very valuable these days. Well, perhaps we'd be valuable too if they put us up for sale. <laughs> Don't give them the card, Sarah. I won't, dear. Wouldn't you like the radio on, dear? It's time for Arthur Godfrey. Thank you very much, and how do you do? <laughs> but that's your favorite program. I don't want the radio. Are you all right, dear? I'm all right. Just a touch of November in my bones. Didn't you tell me Summer was coming by this morning? Yes, dear. Tisha. Then I should have my shoes. Oh, I forgot. I left them in the bedroom. I'll bring them right in. Oh, and my glasses. Make me look presentable. You always look presentable, dear. I expect I'm a great father to you. Oh, I'm here to take care of you, dear. You could change your mind. People do. I'm here as long as you need me. There's always my Anna. Your Anna has never wanted to be involved with us. She is my daughter. Anna has never been very daughterly, and you have never been very motherly. And that's that. Careful. Hold still, dear. Do you remember the swans in the park when we were children? Yes, dear. Mother had hair like the swans. Is my hair as white as Mother's was? I expect so. What color is your hair now, Sarah? Oh, it's faded. All the brown is gone. Everything dies, sooner or later. So you always say. Do you know why old ladies sit on park benches, Sarah? No. Why, dear? To hold them for springtime lovers. Even the benches want to get away in November. But this is August, dear. Well, what does time matter? <laughs> time is time. Yes, if you wear it like a wet blanket. Matthew died in November. I tell you, Sarah, Matthew's months will be, be mine. I don't 
for a bunch of chores. Sarah, I'll, I'll hold down the bench. Mrs. Soddy, what a pleasure to see you. And how lovely you look today. Well, I'll remember you in my will. <laughs> see, you've had some luck. Yes, I've caught several of these, and some of them um, the sea perch. What is the name that you give them? Cunners. We call them cunners, Mr. Marinoff. Uh. Would you like a berry? Oh, thank you. Mmm, <laughs> delicious. Good. I was so sorry to hear about Hilda. It's a wicked shame her passing so sudden. Yes, poor lady. I'm afraid nobody realized that she was so ill. Mm. Well, will you be staying on, I mean, at Hilda's? I expect her daughter will be taking over the house now that she's gone. Yes, I believe so. Yes. Well, it would be a pity to miss the rest of the summer. Well, I must say, I have come to feel very much at home here. Well, I'm sure you'll find some place else to stay. <laughs> Happy fishing. here in the garden. What are you doing? Just finishing a picture. I want to go for my walk. All right. from our rocks. Well, I hope he doesn't want to give us any of those nasty fish. Oh, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> Sewer fish, that's what they are. Nonsense. The currents are very strong there. I will not eat any of those fish. Well, you, you're... of course, would do anything to flatter that frog. Oh. He's not a fraud. I will not eat those fish. You know, I believe we'll see the whales this weekend. That would be surprising. It's time for them. Whales don't come anymore. The herring are running. That's a sure sign. Signs fail, you know. Our hydrangea bush is doing very well. See? Oh, oh they're, they're, they're beautiful. Mother planted this when we were very young. I just graduated from nursing school. Yes. Sarah, do you realize that, that we are we are both, both older now 
than, than Mother was when she died. She loved the garden. When we were children, you believed that the whales changed the seasons. I did? Yes. <laughs> Father told you that the whales caught the wind with their tails and brought it down from the Arctic. <laughs> and I believed him. Yes, <laughs> you did. <laughs> You know what would be nice? What would be nice? A big picture window here instead of these two. I've always wanted one. It would be too expensive, Sarah. Joshua said? Well, of course, Joshua would want one. He would make money from it. Besides, Sarah. We're too old to be considering new things. Have a nice heart to heart. You look peaked, dear. Anything the matter? <sighs> oh, I can tell. What's that cantankerous sister of yours done now? Nothing. Nothing? Well, you got a touch of the cali wobbles? No. Nope. It's Libby, for sure. You know me too well. Okay, yeah. Fifty years of crossing bridges together will do that. Now, out with it. She started talking about dying. Dying? <laughs> that woman is as healthy as a horse. I'm afraid it's her mind. Oh. Phelan, is it? I could be imagining things. Oh, foot, Sarah Weber. You were a nurse. You know what's happening. Senility is what's happening. Oh, oh nonsense. Sarah, Libby was always a difficult woman, even in the best of times. Have you told Anna? Well, I've been thinking for a long time you should ask Anna to take Libby. She wouldn't. Well, why not? She has plenty of money. She'll see that her mother's well cared for. <sighs> well, Sarah, you know what Harry Truman said. What? Well, if the buck is going to be passed, it may as well be passed to somebody with plenty of them. He never said that. <laughs> Of course he didn't. <laughs> Smile, dear. <laughs> Sarah. Sarah, if 
if you did do it, could you manage? What do you mean, Tisha? Well, money, dear. You know, could you afford to keep this place? Well, I've never thought. Well, it's time you did. Now, chances are things could be tight without Libby on what you've got. But you can stay with me. Oh, I couldn't burden you with my troubles. Ah, half a life is trouble, Sarah, and the other half's getting over them. What do you say? Joshua! Joshua, what are you doing? I'm turning your water off. Can't you tell that man to be quiet? Oh, I've been trying for 50 years. Huh. Good morning, Libby. Good morning, Tisha. Joshua! Stop that noise. It's the bathroom drains that leak. If I don't cut the main, you'll be getting a damn sight more than leaks. Why don't you come up for some tea? Thank you. I believe I will. Jesus, Lord above. It takes me half the day to get in here and the other half to get out. We've been waiting for you since June. I guess we can wait another ten minutes. This goddamn crawl space ain't gotten any bigger since I was here last. Good morning, Joshua. Well, hello, Mrs. Dotty. And how are you, Mrs. Strong? Better if you keep down that clatter. I'll do my best, Mrs. Strong. I'll do my very best. Will you join us for tea, Libby? No, I think I'll wait till Mr. Brackett finishes his chores. Joshua, you are incorrigible. Yeah, that too. <laughs> how be you, Mrs. Dotty? Well, better if you keep down the clatter, Mr. Brackett. Ah, uh, she's a cocker, that one. A, uh, a right wicked caution. Need any help, Tara? Be keeping busy, Joshua. Busier than a goddamn bee, Mrs. Dotty. There certainly are a lot of newcomers on the island these days. <laughs> yeah, too many, if you ask me. These biscuits are rather dull. Glory, I never seen so damn many people in all my life. Or cars, for that matter. Some of these summer people bring down two. Lord knows why. I don't even need one. <laughs> you can't walk more than a mile before you fall into the damned ocean. Oh, Joshua. Someone tells me you're seeing Myrtle Jackson again, Joshua. Uh, yeah, when I can, when I can. Well, you two make a lovely couple. Well, you see, Myrtle's a lady, Mrs. Dotty. Mm. And she don't go parading around like a living beach ball, all squeezed into them Bermudy shots. <laughs> Quit a job on a woman like that last week. I left my tools right there. Well, you went back for them, I hope. No, nope. I got plenty of tools. But I ain't got time for people like that. People like that won't even spend their time of day with you. They won't even offer you a cup of tea. You know, them people are going to be the ruination of this island. What happened, Joshua? That woman told me I was too slow, Mrs. Weber. <gasps> the idea. So I told her she could get somebody else if she thought she could do better. And I ain't been back. Good for you. That'll show them. Yeah. You know, can't imagine what I'd do if I retired. Well, of course you can't. Or what would we do if you did? Oh, I'd always do neighborly favors for you ladies anyway. Oh, you're a kind man, Joshua. Some wouldn't agree. Well, they just don't know you. Won't neither. We'll see you in the future, ladies. Don't like it much. A mighty nice cup of tea. Bestest into the island. Oh, Joshua Brackett, you are a flatterer. Yeah, that too.
You know, a big picture window sure would look nice right there, Mrs. Weber. I don't know, Joshua. Libby says we're too old to be bothering about new things. Oh, there's nothing wrong with new, Mrs. Weber. If it makes something good, better. Hey, yeah. Bye, ladies. You know, he's right, Sarah. The whale should be back. I keep hoping we'll see them. Well, let's have a look. We're just going down to the point, Libby, to look for whales, no doubt. Look out there, Sarah. Is that a porpoise? Well, I haven't seen any all summer. Remember how many there were before the war? <laughs> Which war, dear? Why, the war with Germany. Oh, yes. Well, I expect the submarines scared them all away. Ah, oh, you and your submarines. But I saw them many times, especially in 42. Perhaps you saw too many. Well. If you ask me, it's the Russians. They've got the bomb, you know. It's no telling what they're up to. Remember that first summer we watched the whales together? You kept grabbing the glasses. <laughs> well, you were piggy with them. Still are. <laughs> Do you suppose we still might find some ambergris. Ambergris? Oh, my land, Sarah. I haven't thought of our ambergris hunts in years. We were going to make our fortune. Yes, $10 an ounce that stuff yeah, was. Yeah. The new perfume queens. <laughs> Weren't <laughs> yeah. we the pair? <laughs> <laughs> you two are certainly carrying on. Well, there's nothing like a good laugh, Libby. Looking younger every day. <laughs> oh. Here, have some berries. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Gosh, what a long walk with so few berries. I swear there aren't so many as there used to be. It's the nuns. The nuns, Libby? <laughs> yes, they flock around the berry bushes like a bunch of penguins. Well, nuns are entitled to pick berries too, you know. Not on our land. Well, for pity's sake, Libby. Girls, I do have some sad news. Out with it, Tisha. Hilda Partridge passed away yesterday. And now Mr. Marinoff will have to find someplace else to live. Who will be the next lucky person? No idea. I don't think he knows what's next, poor man. But Hilda was so young. Hilda was 83 if she was a dick. <laughs> well, I certainly am going to miss Hilda. She was a crackerjack bridge partner. Oh, you will never guess who finally got a hearing aid. Who, oh, dear? Alice Trueworthy. Hey, yeah. And now she's playing bridge like a champion. <laughs> <laughs> I guess she never heard the bitten before. <laughs> <laughs> anything of Charlie Mayhew lately. You mean you haven't heard? What? He up and married that young waitress from the Abernathy house. You don't say. I do. 
Scandalous, but not surprising. The late Mrs. Mayhew could have taken a booby prize at any cattle show. Libby. <laughs> <laughs> you and Fred Allen would have made a pair. Mm -hmm. Still, Sally Mayhew's grave hardly has grass on it. <laughs> How is your arthritis, dear? Oh, you know, in again, out again, gone again, Finnegan. My young doctor says I can expect it. If I'm determined to live so long. Ah, your young doctor needs a lesson in bedside manners. <laughs> He's so cute, Libby. I can forgive him anything. Let him in, please. Oh, Mr. Marinoff. Come in, come in. Mrs. Doherty, what a surprise. And even lovelier than before. Uh-oh, two mansions in my will. Oh. Come in, come in. I, uh... I'm afraid that these creatures may become odorous if I leave them. <laughs> oh, Mr. Marinoff, thank you. Tisha, would you put them in the icebox? Of course. Thank you. <laughs> Won't you come and have a cup of tea? Well, thank you, Mrs. Weber. Thank you. It's Mr. Marinoff, Libby. It's a pleasure to see you again, Mrs. Strong. He's the only man left who bows. It is my nod to gentler times <laughs> and present company. Thank you. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Here we are. <laughs> Cream or sugar? No, thank you. There. Thank you, dear. I'm so glad you came. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Weber. It completes the pleasure of my morning. Successful fishing expedition. And now, refreshing company. <laughs> Aha! I'm at a party. Uh, don't move an inch, Mr. Marinoff. I already know you're a gentleman. Well, I'd stay, but i got to go see what Mrs. Kinney wants me for. Glory, that woman's got more problems than Mrs. Roosevelt's got causes. <laughs> oh, Joshua. <laughs> uh, you giving any thought to that new picture window, Mrs. Weber? We have thought about it, Mr. Brackett. And the answer is no. I can get you a nice price on the lumber right now. about the window. You could sit here and watch the moon coming up at night. Just imagine dining in a flood of moonlight. Oh. Hey, uh, a right shame. The moon is going to be full tonight. Well, alas, I, I shouldn't be able to see it from my window over on the bayside. <laughs> Mr. Marinoff. Yes, Mrs. Weber. If you promise to clean those fish for me, I promise you dinner and moonlight. That is most kind of you, Mrs. Weber. And I should be happy to contribute my filleting technique to our dinner. Oh. I will not eat any of those fish. But it eats the bones. I've always been deadly afraid of fish bones. Well, they, they can be most troublesome, certainly. Another cup of tea, Mr. Marinoff? Thank you, Mrs. Weber. And please accept our condolences. Oh, let us not talk about sad things, my dear. Well, uh, you still motoring, Mrs. Dotty? I haven't seen you driving behind the wheel of your Model A lately. Oh, yes, dear. Is something the matter with your car? 
Well, it's, it's in the garage. Has something happened, Tisha? Well, there was no use talking to those people. Not a word. Not a word. I left right away, I tell you. I have been driving since 19 and 10 and never had an accident. Oh, well, maybe a little bump when the examiner told me to back up. But what's a little bump, I ask you? Did you lose your license, Tisha? A suspension, it was. Well, then all is not lost, my dear. Oh, yes, yes. They told me I could try again in six months. Well, well, six months. Six months is a very long time. It's only a diversion, my dear. Temporary change in your status. Mrs. Doddy, traffic will come to a full halt when you are seen by the roadside, thumb extended, mysterious, alluring, provocative. Oh, Mr. Marin. <laughs> you can make a bat laugh. <laughs> oh, there's the noon whistle. I'd best be off. Well, your cottage is on my way home. May I have the pleasure of escorting you? Eh, hey, yeah, my last cavalier. <laughs> Good day, Miss Strong. Good day, Mr. Marinoff. Come down at 5.30, Mr. Marinoff. Thank you, Mrs. Weber. Another time, another place. I would offer you my cape to warm you. <laughs> There's my Sir Walter again. Ah, uh, please, my dear. Oh, no, Mr. Marinoff. Oh, but you must. Oh, no, no, I couldn't. But you must. You must accept this last gesture of a doomed and ancient cavalier. Oh, my dear. <laughs> Drink me, then. Your arm. park for a long time. Well, this is like being in a park. No swans, though. <laughs> Matthew and I used to sit in the park. Philip could never sit long enough to sit in the park. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Do you know, Sarah, swans mate for life? Is that a fact? Did you and Philip think it would be for life? Why, yes. Life fooled you. It always does. Tomorrow was our anniversary. Philip's and mine. As you know, Valentine's Day is Matthew's and my anniversary. Was I a good matron of honor? You stepped on my train. <laughs> Sarah, when was it that you, Matthew, and I took that trip west? It was after the war, dear. Philip had been dead for over a year. Yes, of course. Matthew and I thought it would be good for you. But you still crept away to be alone, like you and Philip always did. Just because you and Matthew weren't affectionate. <laughs> For heaven's sake, Sarah, there is no need to make whoopee every other minute. You go and take a nap, dear. I'll waken you in time for Mr. Marinoff. 
He is not my guest. He's our guest. I did not invite him, and I will not eat his fish. But I will give you a pork chop. You haven't changed yet? He'll be here in less than an hour. He'll be here for the rest of your life, if you let him. Why don't you wear your flowered chiffon? I'm not going to change. Busy, busy, busy. Always busy. Be like Tisha, Sarah. What do you mean? She chose not to get her license. You can't mean that. 
Yes. Then she wouldn't have to drive anymore. Nonsense. Whisper cataracts to yourself and see what happens. Good Lord, Libby, that's preposterous. I'm working on my ears now. Now, Elizabeth May, that's enough. You must get changed. I am not going to change for him. Why not? He is a stranger. He's a guest. There is no need for him in this house. This is my house. I invite whom I like. I have no time for this. Sarah? When you lost Philip in the war, I made time. I took care of you for 15 years. You owe me. Then we're even. 15 years for 15 years. Come back, Sarah Louise. Come back. Oh, look what you made me do. I burned all my muffins. Oh, Sarah. Sarah, let, let's not fight. Let's not fight anymore. Forget about the muffins. Get dressed. Let me finish what I have to do. We're so different, you and I. We're strong stock, Sarah. And we've precious little time left. Mrs. Weber. Oh, Mr. Melanoff. What an eye you have for color. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Now mm. I must see to those fish. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, now we shall see if I have kept my skill of hand. Oh, I'm sure you have. Well, you never can tell. Do you like it? It's lovely. Lovely. I'm so glad. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Weber. This is a great pleasure for me, you know. Oh, I'm so glad. I was afraid you would be bored. Bored? <laughs> what a strange idea. Well, my sister and I are just ordinary people, you know. I do not find you so. <laughs> I'm glad. Would you like to go with me in the morning to see the whales? Oh, indeed I would, Mrs. Weber. I have never seen a whale. Well, they come here every year. They do. Oh.
Libby, dinner's ready. Dinner's on the table. Mrs. Strong. Mr. Marinoff. my uncle, the Grand Duke, who gave the most elegant entertainments. <laughs> and the ladies waltzing, da 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 Their gowns seem to rise and fall, but never to touch the floor. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you came. How often does one get a chance to entertain a member of the Russian Imperial Court? These days, my dear, almost never. You mustn't be so modest, Mr. Marinoff. Once a nobleman, always a nobleman. Alas, dear ladies, all of this is in the past. Tisha has told us about your photographs. Oh, forgive me, Mrs. Strong. My mother at the Winter Palace, 1910, I believe. Photographs fade. Memories live forever. Alas, Mrs. Strong, memories can fade too. That has not been my experience. I'll get the coffee. Labor Day is such a sad holiday, is it not? It drives us home to our winter caves. And where will you be hibernating, Mr. Marinoff? Well, I, I was thinking of taking a small flat on the mainland. Oh, far from St. Petersburg. Yes, and almost as cold. Yes. I should think you'd prefer to be in the south in the winter. Well, one makes economies, madam. I suspected you were a practical man. A primary requisite for, uh, for survival. Would you not agree? Most certainly. And when you escaped from Russia, Mr. Marinoff, you went to Paris? Uh, Paris, <laughs> yes. Sarah's been to Paris. Haven't you, Sarah? Oh, it was such an exciting city. In a way, certainly. But depending upon one's circumstances. Well, you won't find much excitement here. Oh, but, Mrs. Strong, here you have the true excitement. The sunset, this, this moonlight, and tomorrow the, the promise of Wales. But Paris, it always reminds me of Champagne. <laughs> Champagne always gives me a headache. Well, in Paris, we did sparkle for a little while and managed to nourish our dreams. But nevertheless, dear ladies, we were merely bijou. Trinkets we were, but en route to extinction. But you are not extinct, Mr. Marinov? No, I am still very much here. It must take great courage to go on alone. No, not courage, my dear. Nothing so heroic as that. Merely a considerable investment of will. And resources, no doubt. Yes, madam. Will and resources. Allow me to tell you a story. When we received the news that the Dowager Empress had died, we all went into deep mourning. My mother spoke to no one for over a week. Then one morning she brought me to her she said, 
Nikolai, our empress is gone. There will no longer be any use for any of us. You must leave me now and go into the world. Then she handed me a handkerchief in which she had wrapped all of her remaining jewelry. She made me take it. My mother kissed me and said, use my treasure for your needs, my son, but in the end, be able to say that it was well spent. This is the last piece. Oh, it's magnificent. An emerald, Libby. Do feel it. An emerald? It must be of, of great value. It'll fetch more than enough to see me cross the bar. You are a very fortunate son, Mr. Marinoff. Indeed I was, madam. Where have you been staying this summer? Libby, he was... Oh, of course, he killed her. Oh, oh, how sad. And, and how very unfortunate for you, Mr. Marinoff. Have you found another place? Not yet. I do advise you, Mr. Marinoff, to start your search for a refuge immediately. But I must warn you, do not expect to find it here. I've learned one thing from life, Mrs. Strong, to expect nothing. It is late. I must retire. Good night, Mr. Marinoff. sister is a remarkable woman. She does not make small talk. She's unforgivable. No. I should not have intruded on you this morning. Nonsense. No truth. <laughs> no, I was following an instinct of many years, and your very astute sister recognized it. I have once again been set adrift. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Marinov. Oh, you needn't be, my dear. I have often been adrift, but I have always stayed afloat. But all these years, what have you done? I have spent my life visiting friends. Oh, you've been free. I envy you. I have found you out. You are a romanticist. <laughs> Do you think one can live too long? Life can never be too long. Even if one outlives one's time? One's time is all one's time, even to the end. You see out there how the moon casts its silver coins along the shore? There is a treasure that can never be spent. Well, I must be on my way. Will I see you in the morning? No, I think it is better if you do not. You have given me an evening of rare pleasure, Mrs. Weber, and oh. I shall treasure its memory. Oh. Well, you will always be my welcome guest. Sleep well, my dear. Yes. You have your rendezvous with leviathans, and it would not do to keep them waiting.
46 years, Philip. 46 red roses, 46 white. White for truth, red for passion. That's what you always said. Passion and truth, that's all we need. I wish you were here, Philip. I don't know what to do about Libby. She seems to have become so bitter. She was so cruel about Mr. Marinoff. And she won't have our picture window. She says we're too old, our lives are over. I don't think I can manage her much longer. Oh, if only you were here, Philip. so many stays and so many ties. <laughs> you said too many, my love. The moon will set before I have you completely undone. <laughs> but I said, never, my love. I won't be entirely undone, even by you. For what mystery would keep you with me if you unwrap them all? until I came back here. And there you were, sitting 
right on the edge of the rocks, and I was frightened for you. But I'm all right, dear. You were almost within his reach, and you, you were, were dreaming, going dear. right towards... Go back to bed, Libby. No. No. He is here. And he's here for both of us. No. You can choose death if you like to. But life is not yet over for me. I'm going to bed. Good night, Elizabeth May. Happy anniversary, Sarah Louise. I don't want to be a trouble to you. Of course not, dear. It was a bad dream. Ah, uh, that's right. It was very real. I'm sure it was, Libby. Is Mr. Marinov coming to watch for the whales? No, Libby, he won't be coming. You're thinking of leaving me, aren't you, Sarah? Perhaps it would be best. But we've always been together. You... You know me. But you don't need me, Libby. What... What do you plan to do? Well, I may stay on the island this winter. Uh, with Tisha. Perhaps. And hunt for ambergris? Perhaps. Sarah? Will you... Will you brush my hair? Yes. What would you do, Libby? Well, I'll go home to my Anna. And I will ask her to find me a companion. I, I'm sure she'll do that for me. Of course she will. Life fooled me. It always does. My hair is white as the swans. I expect it is. Is it as white as mother's was? Yes, dear. I have beautiful hair. 
I've always had beautiful hair. <laughs> Good morning, dear. Sarah, this is Mr. Beckwith. He's a realtor. <laughs> He's come to look at Hilda's house. Oh. How do you do, Mrs. Weber? <laughs> May I? Sarah and I have been friends for over 50 years, just like sisters. What can I do for you, Mr. Beckwith? Well, Mrs. Weber, Mrs. Dowdy's been telling me you may be interested in placing your house on the market. Patricia! Well, after our little talk yesterday, dear, I thought this was a chance we shouldn't miss. Well, strike while the iron is hot, dear. So say I. That's a very good principle in business, Mrs. Dowdy. Thank you. You're not winterized here, of course. My aunt built this house over a half century ago. Mm. Pity. Still, it's a beautiful situation. That view alone will guarantee you a good price. Well, could you give us an idea what this place is worth? How many bedrooms have you got, Mrs. Weber? Three. I just take a look upstairs. No. Come down, please. Mrs. Doughty is mistaken. My house is not for sale. Goodbye, Miss Weber. Forgive the intrusion. I hope I haven't. If you ever reconsider. Well, I'd better be on my way, too. Well, I must go about my chores. You must come and visit us in Philadelphia next winter. Sarah, I only meant to... You know you're my dearest friend. Crossing bridges, dear. Then everything's all right? Of course, dear. Goodbye, Sarah.
We are not leaving home, Philip. Talking to yourself. Was that Tisha? Yes. I thought I heard a man's voice. She brought a man with her, but I sent him away. Oh. Well. I'm glad you did. You've never been a trouble to me, Libby. You've been a good sister. Oh. Anybody home? You ladies decent? Why, Joshua. What do you want, Mr. Brackett? Well, I lost my goddamn wrench. Seen it anywhere? Take a look outside where you were working yesterday. Would you like some breakfast, dear? That would be nice. I'll get it for you. I found it! That must be the noisiest man God ever created. Thank you, Mrs. Weber. Good morning to you, Mrs. Strong. Mighty sorry if I disturbed you ladies. Mr. Brackett. Yes, Mrs. Strong. How long would it take you to put in that picture window? Oh, a couple of weeks. Maybe less. And you said you could get a good price on the lumber? Yeah. Could you have it done by Labor Day? Well, I thought that, that you... My sister and I have decided we would like you to install a picture window as soon as possible. I'll order up the lumber in the morning. You ladies certainly know how to keep a man guessing. Be seeing ya. It feels like a beautiful morning. Oh, it is a beautiful morning. Let's go down to the point. Can you see them? The whales have all gone. You can never tell. You can never tell.